Just like the rest of the solar system, the Earth was formed over 4.5 billion years ago, when the remains of a supernova like this one crossed a vast cloud of cosmic dust. After this accidental birth, our planet was subject to bombardment by meteorites and comets during a large part of its history. During the first part of its existence, the Earth was an inhospitable place. Aside from external aggression, there was also great volcanic activity on its surface. This violent phase, however, favored the evaporation of water and the emission of gases like carbon dioxide and methane. The atmosphere was slowly created with these elements. If this had not occurred, the Earth would eventually have been burned by the sun's rays. During this infernal period, the basic broth, a kind of culture medium or breeding ground for life, was also formed. The water of the seas penetrated the cracks of the sea bottom and returned to the sea through the volcanoes. This water was enriched with minerals that it had taken from the heart of the earth, which when it came into contact with the atmosphere, provoked the Great Leap. Chemistry opened the way to biology and the appearance of the first bacteria. Present-day organisms could not survive in such a toxic environment, but the planet's path towards milder, stable conditions allowed the first signs of life to maintain themselves and evolve from their simple forms towards more complex beings. The impact of meteorites did not suddenly stop. In fact, many years later, the dinosaurs disappeared due to their effects. But fortunately, biodiversity was well developed at that time. And even though species disappeared in huge numbers, life was already deeply rooted. Hundreds of organisms were able to survive in the middle of the impressive destruction. Life on Earth has overcome a variety of climatic and environmental changes. But as radical as the changes may be, a living being that does not depend on water, oxygen, and solar energy, or one that can survive in such extreme temperatures, is not conceivable. In recent years, however, the discovery of organisms that live on the fringes of these laws are modifying our ideas about what a living being needs. These organisms are known as extremophiles, the lovers of very radical external conditions. These waters belong to the River Tinto in the southern Spanish province of Huelva. Its peculiar blood-red color, which gave it its name, is due to the metals that it bears. They come from the rocks that are dragged from its headwaters and from spillages from mines. Here a community of living beings has been discovered that challenges the traditional point of view concerning the environmental conditions that allow for survival. These microscopic images have been recorded in these unhealthy waters, which show some organisms that assume basic vital functions without difficulties. There are two extreme characteristics of the river, the low pH 
In other words, the acidity of the system, which is around 2, and the high concentration of heavy metals. Heavy metals are toxic, especially those in the mining area of the River Tinto, essentially copper, which is used to prevent the growth of fungi in vineyards, and arsenic and cadmium, etc. The surprise was finding eukaryotic organisms, not the prokaryotes, the bacteria that eat minerals, but eukaryotes, algae, fungi, filament fungi, protozoans, amoebas, etc., which are present in a place where no one in their right mind would think that they could exist. The mysterious life that is hidden in the River Tinto has disconcerted scientists and not only because it is a unique class of extremophiles. It is extraordinary because in these conditions a certain degree of biological variety has developed, with more or less common algae, fungi, and amoebas. Their ability to adapt is such that we could say that they don't appear to be terrestrial. The first extremophiles were discovered a little over 30 years ago in Yellowstone Park in the United States. They were organisms that survived in temperatures over 100 degrees Celsius. They appeared in geological chimneys where water vapor emerged from the interior of the earth. Scientists have also found living beings that are fond of extreme temperatures in the cold Antarctic rocks. In the ice, or in the lakes of water found below, they have found bacteria and algae living hundreds of meters below the surface. They are cold lovers, living beings that have the peculiarity of growing slowly since the low temperatures slow down their metabolisms. At Movil Cave, in Romania, a group of several animals have lived isolated from the outside world for about five and a half million years. There is no oxygen or light there, but 48 different species survive in this place. Its trophic chain takes advantage of the energy from the chemical elements that exist in the cave in order to produce nutritional substances for feeding. These strange mounds on the Australian coast are known as stromatolites. They are the fossil remains of bacteria that have been grouped in layers. The lower layers are formed by anaerobic bacteria, which are beings that, strange as it may seem, do not need oxygen to live. Even today, there is a class of organisms that exist in environments that lack oxygen, of which our intestine is one, among others. There are even more cases of life in anomalous conditions. In the Dead Sea, and in specific salt lagoons of Africa's Rift Valley, there are some salt-loving bacteria. To survive in a salty medium, these organisms have developed their own mechanisms to avoid dehydration. The extremophiles are what allows us to open a series of scenarios, which means if there are microorganisms that can grow at high temperatures, the model of originating life in an underwater volcano at 100 or so degrees is not absurd, because today there are microorganisms that can do it. In a surface salt marsh with a high concentration due to evaporation, specific interactions are favorable, which can happen since there are microorganisms that exist in these conditions today. 
If life emerged in such unfavorable environments, it is therefore a much stronger impulse than what our limited vision expected. Yeah.